Hey, good morning, everybody. Hello, misfits and, and fitmits and all of those people. <laughs> uh, today is February 11th, 2019. Uh, it's Monday, and uh, we had a pretty big, powerful uh, recap last week. Um, and this morning, uh, I, was, I was working, had written down the word devour. Uh, what does it mean to devour something, to really consume something? And then that word turned into something else this morning. Uh, and the word that it turned into is, uh, well, I'll just show it to you here. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Can you all see that? Emotional hostage. When you are being held to someone else's emotions or you being held to be responsible that your emotions would transfer to them. Now, I, I'm, I'm gonna speak personally about this. As, uh, as a fish in the water, you're the last one to know what water is. Um, being raised uh, with my family who was extremely close and extremely proud. Uh, my mom was an alcoholic, didn't know that's what she was. Uh, because if that's what you grow into, that's just who they are. There's not a title for it. That's mom. Uh, and I now know what that, when I read this this morning, when I was going through this this morning for about the last hour and a half, uh, of just seeing how it's defined and what it's called, how we are sometimes, uh, oftentimes, um, held accountable for somebody else's emotions. Now, I will say, uh, one of the things I did read, um, anybody ever see a, a, a mom just lose total control over a child in a store here recently? And I say recently, last decade or so, when they throw the tantrum on the floor? That, my friends, is being an emotional hostage to that child, right? So let's, let's just dive into this a little bit. Um, hostage. A person seized or held as security for the fulfillment of a condition. How many of you have heard this? Because I, I know this only because I've been studying the brain for so long. Amygdala hijacking. <laughs> Not a common conversation. An immediate overwhelming emotional response with a later realization that the response was inappropriately strong given the trigger. Now, we've all done this because here's what's happened. Somebody has said something, we went, what? I'm like, whoa, whoa, Jesus, whoa, what the hell's wrong with you? Oh, I'm sorry. That was an amygdala hijack. The amygdala is the fight or flight. The term amygdala hijacking was first coined in Daniel Coleman's book, Emotional Intelligence. These, listen, the way we respond to anything is within our control. And if we can't control it, it means we're hijacked. Gender, I hope you get that. This is, this is critical to understand. The way we respond to anything is totally always within our control. If, if we are responding outside of the way we would normally can respond to a situation, it means we weren't in control. It's that simple. Now, I'm not saying it's a simple fix. Let me be very clear. What I am saying is that it is a simple understanding that those are the realities. If we can't control the way we're responding in a situation, then we're hijacked. So here's what the definition of hostage, or here's the definition of emotional. Arousing or characterized by intense feelings. A hostage, a hostage is a person seized or held for the security, uh, it must be Italian, security uh, for the fulfillment of a condition. One that is involuntarily controlled by an outside influence. Now listen, it, hostage, is, hostage wasn't the term, hostage meant somebody who, who was going to reside in a residence. Maybe that's where the word hostile comes from. But hostage wasn't a, wasn't a bad word. Hostage meant somebody who was going to stay in a, in a room, and because they stayed there, they probably had to pay a fee for it, right? Every time we go into a hotel, we're held hostage for the bill. 
but a person that is involuntarily controlled by an outside influence. How many of us have ever gone into church and if we were kids, our parents said, stop that, we're in church, right? You're supposed to act a certain way when you go somewhere. Emotional hostage, someone who holds you accountable for their feelings. Being an emotional hostage can take a tool uh, and take a toll on a person. So you know I type these things when you see those little errors. But can you, how many of us have ever been in emotional, emotion, don't have to raise your hand, I'm just asking. How many of us have been an emotional hostage before to a relationship? I had a, a girlfriend that I was dating. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, leaving Easter dinner to go like check on her and then running back to Easter dinner at the club. That probably wasn't a healthy situation. Look at this. This, this just absolutely... Um, emotional. Look at the word. No, is that what that is? Let me just make sure. I can't see. Yeah, the term emotional. Look at how that just has gone like skyrocket. Didn't we have emotions in the 1800s? Yeah, but literally they were, they were pressed down and packaged up and nobody really talked about their emotions. But look at how since the 1900s, it's just skyrocketed. And then look at the term hostage mentions. This is the mentions of it. 1800s, yeah, it was there. It slowly dipped down. But then what would you have to say that is? The 1950, 1960s, 70s, maybe? I don't know. Why all of a sudden? Is it because of social media, because of the internet? We could see hostage, hostage situations. What you think about, what you think about and think about, you bring about. What, where thoughts go, results follow. Bob Proctor said, don't ever talk to me about, a vo Mother Teresa said, don't ever invite me to a war against, uh, a, a march against war. Invite me to a, a march for peace, I'll be there. The things we talk about, we bring about. The fact that we hear all of this stuff, the fact that this is, that that, that has escalated the way it has, it puts it into our psyche. A hostage, a captive, a prisoner, a detainee, an internee, internee, a pledge, it comes from the Latin word, the state of being a hostage. Now, here's four ways to know you're in emotional blackmail. Now, there's the four things. I'm going to bring them, take them in each, in each one into a bigger slide so you can see it. A, ta a tactic used to threaten you to get what they want. You know, I've been in the network marketing industry, MLM, me loving more. I've seen company and corporate owners do this to their team, to their, to their people. I've seen corporations do this to their people. I've seen families do it to their kids. Knowing what constitutes an, an emotional hostage. When someone acts in a situation, if they don't get what they want, they will hurt themselves for the attainment of the thing. Those kids rolling around on the floor. God. My mother jerked me out of the, one of those roundabouts, you know, when they used to hang in, in Sears, they used to hang those things and you'd write in the clothes racks and stuff. I went and hid in one of those. <laughs> and my mother was from New York. We were, I, was, I was born in Yonkers, New York. And my mother was going, Sean, Sean. And I could hear the change in her voice, which made me giggle because it was a change. And I heard this lady go, he's in here. And I'm going, <clears throat> Do you ever see that the movie like the alien where that thing snatches it and they're like the shadow of the body is left? I mean, it's snatched it so hard out of there. The only the outline of the person is left. That was me. My mother snatched me out of that thing because I wanted I wanted a toy, right? We were in Sears and I wanted a toy and I was gonna hide till I got the toy. She snatched me out of that thing and threw me in the back of the LTD from inside the store literally threw me like 400 yards. I want the last, the next thing I remember, I was in the back seat. So all I can assume was I was thrown through the air, out the doors. That's the last time I tried to get what I thought I had the power over. Now, again, my mother didn't beat me. I, I, I don't believe she did. I can't say that for a fact, but I, I'm 99.99% sure I was never. Now, 
wooden spoons and everything else. Yeah, that's just what happens when you're raised on a farm. You just, you know, when your mother cooks with cast iron skillets, she's got some strength in her arms. Um, know where your emotional boundaries are. How many of us have the ability to say no to something? Right, you can't, <clears throat> you may wanna write this down. You can't K-N-O-W until you N-O. You can't know until you know. When you realize that where your boundaries are, it's the proverbial rock in a hard place. If you've ever been in a situation where the only choice you have is a, 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 a shitty one and a not so shitty one, that's not a good place. You're, in an, you're, you're somewhere in an emotional quandary. Someone holds you emotional for their feelings. Listen, you got to make me happy. You got to. You guys need to all show up every day at six thirty Central Time to make me happy. No, you don't. You know you don't. I hope you know you don't. And if you are, then you're being held hostage by some idea, some idea, some concept, some some philosophy that is that is wired into you. And if, and if there's ever a moment where you feel you need to show up to this call, I would urge you to tie your hands together and behind your back and, and lock your keyboard up so you can't click, I'm going online. And be in control of it. Because if you ever show up here for me rather than you, then you need a day off. Just telling you. I typed in emotional hostage and 357 million results. Is that, is that not insane? At least I think it's insane. Me, I think it's insane. What are some of the, 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 the telltale signs of, of, a, of, a, of an emotionally hostage situation? It's a draining relationship. They conjure up situations. They play on your sense of duty to get things done for them. They expect you to drop everything. Mason could pretty much, Mason's got me emotionally hostage. If he was at school, now there are things where he could do just the craziest thing and I'll not get upset. He knows three rules. Don't lie, never disrespect your mother and make sure you're, you are in good standings with what our family stands for. Other than that, wreck a car, could care less. Run it up over the curb. We were driving. He's right. He's driving now. <laughs> and he runs over a curb the other day, and he's like, freaks out. I'm like, what's the matter? He's like, no, uh, I just, I think, uh, like, dude, nobody got hurt. The car's fine. Everything's good. Let's keep going. Say a, say a mean word to his mother. <laughs> There's just certain things. How many of us have ever had our feelings trivialized? I, you know, I heard this word. I never really knew what it was. Who's heard the term gaslighting? Evidently, it's been around for a long time, but I hear it more and more now. It's where you just, over time, you challenge the psyche of somebody. So this is a tough one. I know I, I've been working on this this morning as well. What are 10 situations of belief that can, situations that control your well-being? Is there a relationship? Is there an idea? If you go to, well, I'm gonna go prospect. I'm not good enough, I'm not this, I'm not that. That's a situation that controls your, your psyche. Um, uh, paying your bills. Do you absolutely lose your total ability to focus if you gotta pay bills? Um, do you get uh, overly excited in a situation where most people don't? Now, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just, here's the thing. If a situation controls us more than we control us, then we've got some, we've got some uncovering to do, some realizing to do. One of the biggest things that controls us is if I had to tell everybody on this thing, okay, today you have to go do a one hour speech on feeding chickens. I don't know, p p just pick a topic. Could you stand in front of an audience of 50 people and go give a presentation today? 
on something you're good at. And if the thing is you start to break out in a sweat, that's an emo that you're an emotional hostage to speaking. Not saying you got to get over that. You can, we can avoid things, right? I, I'm not going to Tehran or to uh, Afghanistan to go have a picnic. I'm going to avoid those situations. People say, well, aren't you afraid to go to Mexico City all the time? No. Well, there's so much problems there. Yeah, I could go to Deep Elm in downtown Dallas and find the same, put myself in a similar situation. I could go to Chicago. I could go to Detroit. I could go to Miami. And I could never be seen again. Don't have to leave the United States. I, hell, I don't have to leave Plano, Texas to put myself in harm's way. You just need to understand where you're going and not understand the environment you're about to step into. This is helping. Okay. What would be the fear? I'm going to change this. I'm tired of this doing this. Do, 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 do. Uh, what are some of the fears, the experiences that you're going through on a regular basis? What would be the fear of actually having uh, to, to, to avoid being a hostage? And the sadness is, is that once you realize the things that have been holding you hostage that no longer do, it's like, crap, you know how long ago I could have been over this? You could have. You can be sad, but here's the thing. You're wasting another minute to be sad in the realization of you shoulda, coulda, woulda. Excited about writing new rules and becoming the, the rule breaker as it relates to your own ability to avoid. See, ho being hostage, man, that sounds like such a rough word. That sounds like, geez, I have no control. Well, if there's a situation that causes you to become paralyzed, you have no control. The question you have to ask is, is it a reality of no control or are you being a hostage based upon preset of determinations, preset of rules that you've allowed to leak into your life, to allow to seep into your life to start to set the standard? We change the standard every day. I hope we change the standard every day, right? This is where drying yourself off as from a shower every day, brushing your teeth with a different, this is when you start to take control of the body. The physiology of goal setting is becoming so prevalent to me, so obvious to me, and no one talks about it. We have to, the reason I think 97% of the people fail at setting goals or reaching goals, we don't, 100% of, of us can set a goal. I think the reason that the three percenters do it is because they've been able to work their body through something. These are people, think about the people who you know that have no reason at all to be successful and then all of a sudden they're wildly successful. Right? The, uh, Nick Voynichek, I think how you say his last name, he's a good friend of uh, my good friend Kelly. No arms, no legs. He's got his little chicken leg stump, right? He talks about his little, why should he be a global speaker? It wasn't very many decades ago where that soul would not have even been on the planet anymore. You get me? Why? Because there's been such an emotional roller coaster. These are the people that wind up stepping up, standing out. It's usually that person who's been through an emotional trauma that takes the stage. Well, there's things in our own life that there's emotional traumas that every one of us have had, good, bad, or indifferent. We're not here to do a, a mine's better than yours kind of scenario. It's, but we've all experienced emotional traumas that that, that that part of us could change the world. Start with our own, but it can change the world. We just need to let it out. We need to be Brene Brown, vulnerable. That vulnerability allows others to have courage in us. Here's the, here's the four things that they talked about. How do you deal with being an emotional hostage? How do you deal with understanding that this situation actually exists for all of us? Be honest with yourself. Look at the situation. Is it, is it really a moment where I'm not in control? Is it a moment where somebody else is controlling me and I am at their whim? Forgiveness, right? Deepak Chopra says, forgive others not because they deserve it, but because you deserve it. 
my mentor would say, it's time to get over yourself and get on with life. Faith, turn to that which inspires you. And gratitude, find the one thing to be grateful for just a few seconds, just a few seconds. In that moment of dark, deep despair, in the shadows, right? In the darkness, there is no shadow. For the one second that you step out and you find that one thing that you can be grateful for, I don't care if it's for two seconds. It says for even two or three seconds. It's for that one moment that in that state of gratitude, you're, like, you're actually stepped out into the light. And in the light, you can see the shadow. And you can decide the shadow is real or not real or how strong it is or how close it is. But it, for, for once, you get to look at it as the observer. Principle of Kaizen, one-tenth of one percent improvement every day. This is why organizations are so critical to the success of any addict, right? Whether it be, I have a very dear friend who's 25 years going through divorce. She's going through divorce recovery. I couldn't even imagine that there's a, that there's a community like that, but uh, there is. For any condition, people want similarities. People want to know there's other people who are just like them because I can't, I can't, I can't, even fathom you telling me about what's going through my life unless you've been through it. Very few people who have been through tragedy can consider somebody an expert unless they've been through it to even receive advice from them. It's just the way our brain is designed. I've been all of this. I'm still probably a lot of this. This is what introspection does. This is what meditation does. I don't know why these words show up like this. This is probably my deep, dark psyche going, ooh, we have, it's the inmates running the, the prison. And they're showing up going, ooh, let's, let, we need him to talk about this, talk about this, find it. I was, I was on Devour. How do you go to emotional hostage from Devour? But I can tell you growing up as a child, these were things that constantly had me on eggshells. It's when I was 14 in the book, Mom and Dadpreneurs, when I said enough's enough. So there you go. That's a tough, oh, here's the, here's a, uh, that's the toolbox for depression. I thought I had another one here. Oh, this was, uh, where was it? There it is. So uh, the relationship specialist is where these came from. How to, some toolboxes to deal with. But you, again, 375 million reviews or, or Google search points for emotional hostage. There's some things to do there. So now I'm going to open it up for conversation. When you hear these words, when you go through this conversation, when you hear emotional hostage, um, whether it be your own thoughts on money, uh, family, finance, all of that stuff, what shows up for you? What, what, sits on your heart when you hear this stuff. Now, in the silence, here's one of the here's one of the most difficult things for a speaker to deal with is silence. It is one of the most neurolinguistic programming um I don't even want to say ninja. Ninja at least will will you know, kill you and you won't know it. This is, this is running you over with a steamroller. Silence, when there's a dialogue going on to the audience, is a steamroller, a very slow steamroller that starts at your toes. So I just want you to know, it's okay to sit in silence. Margie, I see you raising your hand. Go ahead, my love. After 71 years and hearing this today, it was like a steamroller running through my head of all the things from childhood on. And it's, it's, it's amazing that the release just with what you were saying and this stuff going through, and it was like, I was just ticking them off one at a time. It was really cool. Thank you. Margie, thank you. That's, and again, part of this is being courageous enough for us to hear our own conversation. Please, um, go ahead. For, for, for me, um, 
I realized that I've been sort of held hostage by this poverty mentality that my father bred into me because, you know, he always worked for so little, raising eight kids. And so he always made me realize or made me think and believe that you had to work really, really hard and you'd be lucky to get by. And so I've been held hostage by that emotional belief for years. And I, I recognize that I am finally starting to get control of that. I don't have 100% control yet, but I feel finally like I'm taking that captive and letting myself know and understand that I don't have to be held by that. And I don't have to do what he made me believe in order to get by. I can do more than get by. I have the abilities and the skills and et cetera. And I'm, I'm just now getting the strength for that. But when you're talking about childhood stuff, one thing that came to mind when my daughter was about two years old, we were out in the mall shopping and uh, she, she was terrible for wanting to go somewhere else other than me. And I was dragging her and she didn't want to come. So she threw herself down on the floor and she started kicking and screaming, like literally kicking and screaming with her hands. So I just thought, okay. So I got down on the floor and I started kicking and screaming and she kind of, and she stopped, and after that we went shopping, and I never had a problem with it again. <laughs> she found she couldn't control me. <laughs> That's the greatest. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's the story we all hear about the, the, the person who is in the hole, and somebody throws a note down and says, uh, I'll, I'll whatever. And then the friend jumps down in the home. They go, what'd you jump down here for? Now I can't get out. They go, no, I was down here last week. I know the way out. The, the, you can't hold hostage over somebody. You can't, you can't hold them hostage if they've, if they've been a hostage. Oh yeah, no, this is nothing. Uh -huh. It's why we have mentors, right? Teachers will teach you what you need to know to do. A coach will teach you how to do what you want to do better, but a mentor will teach you how to do what you didn't know you could do. Too many people are saying they're mentors and they're coaches. Too many people are saying they're coaches and they're teachers. There's very few mentors that are out there. Amen to that. Well, Shami, you're talking about the amygdala hijack. That really struck with me because I have found, and I'm so much better at it now because I, oh, I, I used to go like, what? <laughs> Get somebody's book, what? <laughs> what the hell, you know? I would, and I would do that. I know I, and I, and I knew, and then it was just like in my body, I'm like, oh my God, that's the wrong thing to do. Like, you know what I mean? I, I knew immediately that it was the wrong way to respond at all. I was responding, I was reacting. That's, uh, that's the thing. So I really, my family has really noticed that with me, with me now that I, that I don't, I don't do that. I really don't do that anymore. And I know too, it's because of these, this, this mastermind group. I, I know there's, and you've been giving us, ideas like with Dr. Joe Dispanza, like this different, you know, Mel Brooks, all these different. No, no, I gotta say, wait a minute. That cool. sentence, I, that, that has to be put down, that has to be chiseled in stone somewhere. Cause I doubt it'll ever be mentioned again. Dr. Joe Dispenza and Mel Brooks in the same sentence. <laughs> yeah, well, th those are who I was listening to this weekend. It was like, it was crazy. And Sean, you're, when you're on live on Saturday, I am not kidding you. I received some information just moments before your message. I mean, you were saying about now how we can have control over these thoughts when, you know, when, when, the, when information comes in or something like bad news or whatever. And it was just like, Vince and I were listening to this and I'm looking at, yes, yes, I'm going to have to get that book. But it was so amazing because it was just right at that moment because that's why i said to you this is very timely because it was like i knew boom i'm not going to react i can't react oh my gosh it was and, so awesome and and so just so that you get an idea this philosophy that's in here this mm -hmm. mindset is from 60 bc yeah and i'm still going to use bc because i don't know <clears throat> correct thing is there's there's a new way to say it mason goes oh we don't say bc anymore i'm like are you freaking kidding me uh -huh. you don't learn how to s cursive write anymore and now you can't say bc yeah but here's the funny thing this book epictetus yeah the manual 
60 BC, 601 BC, the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu say the same thing. Yeah. So when I love him to death, Bob Proctor talks today, or Norman Vincent Peale sp speaks, or uh, Mark Victor Hansen speaks, or I speak, uh -huh. we ain't got nothing new, folks. <laughs> yeah. There ain't a damn thing new under the sun. The same 26 letters that they use to create everything, same 26 letters I use. I can't have anything new. I can have a new syntax. I can have a new spin on an old idea, or I can even think I have a new idea, but if you go read, it's a download from the universe of, you know what? I said that, I said that 3,000 years ago. I'm glad you finally heard it. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? And then I can't wait to get into this one, Marcus Aurelius. So I'll put this up, the Marcus Aurelius, it's, it's kind of his diary, right? The Roman Empire, who's all about war and but dealing with fights and so it's just it's truth is truth but so how do we get out of being this emotional hostage we have to we first of all we have to a recognize it this is where i go, go back to addiction to approval um, being an emotional hostage sounds a lot easier to accept as a badge than being addicted to somebody's approval well i'm not addicted to anybody oh really do they say something and it gets your goat well yeah <laughs> So you're addicted to approval. And okay, any I'm gonna addict, jump. Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Danya. I'm going to jump in here real quick. Um, it's amazing how many small things can hold us hostage. Um, me and my husband, when we were watching a movie last night, an older movie, and I think I'd seen it a long time ago, but wow, it, it's awesome. If you haven't seen it, you need to. It's called The Ultimate Gift. <clears throat> and... Um, it talks about this young, rich kid that um, his grandfather um, had a ton of money and he passed away. And before he was going to give the grandson the ultimate gift, which the grandson did not know what the ultimate gift was going to be, he made him go through a series of gifts. Um, one of the gifts was the gift of work, the gift of money, the gift of laughter, the gift of family, the gift of gratitude. And it goes through all these seven different gifts that the grandson had to go through to learn before he could get the ultimate gift. So many times we don't realize that these things are actually gifts. Work is a gift, you know, um, family is a gift, which, you know, family we know is a gift, but we, do we really appreciate it? And there was one part where the young kid was over in Ecuador and he had been captured and he was held hostage for several days. Well, come to find out, the only thing that was holding him in was a tiny little lock that he could just have easily opened at any time. Um, but he never really paid attention to it because he was held hostage within himself. And anyway, it's just an excellent movie. You need to watch it. And uh, thank you so much for today. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So you guys have a Thanks, good one. Tony. Love you tons. Thanks. So, in these moments of awareness, we go through the four stages, fear, fear of admitting, fear of realizing, fear of recognizing, fear of dealing with, fear of, if, if, if you are an emotional hostage of something, <clears throat> when you break free, what's, what's the challenge that happens with most people who get out of jail? Don't they wind up back in it? So if we get out of jail, if we get out of this emotional hostage situation, what's that phrase? The beatings will continue till morale improves. <laughs> we wind up going back into that hostage situation because it's our identity. How many times do we hear women who are in abusive relationship wind up serial dating and finding those people? Because that's who their identity is. They haven't freed themselves of that. 
not saying they could or they shouldn't or they would. I'm not here to, to, to cast judgment, right? The, the, the one who without sin should cast the first stone. I got a whole pile over there, but I ain't picking them up. <laughs> I could throw a lot of stones, but I got to go, ah, oh, yeah, no. I ain't ready. So we see these patterns. Here's the hard part. Here's the hard part. Y'all ready? You ready to get uh, to use Leslie's smacked upside the head language? Do you know why we can recognize them? Because we understand them. We've experienced it. There's a couple of people on here that if I spoke Spanish, first of all, they'd laugh at my Spanish, but they would be, they would freely understand me and they would understand what I'm saying because they understand that. But if I were to speak, <clears throat> if I were to speak uh, Swedish, I don't know anybody on here would understand. I wouldn't understand it. Swedes can't understand Swedes. But, but my point is, is that if we speak in a language, we don't understand. If we speak in a, in a movement we don't understand. What if the way we had to say, what if, what if somebody came from another planet and the way they said no is where they stuck their finger up their nose? That's how they said hello. H hello, what would, what would we do? We'd be like, what are they doing? That's not how you say hello, but that's how they say hello. Well, how you live your life or how somebody else lives their life and you can see them as a hostage, you can see them being ruled over, you can see them being this, that, or the other, it's because we've been in there. We can't see anything we don't understand. The reticular activating system won't let us do it. The brain's looking for two things. How fast can I recognize the pattern and will it kill me? And we see these patterns all around. Right? How many of us see the guy, the 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 sixty, the fifty-five year old in the Corvette with the beer belly or the Dunlap disease, and he's with the hot twenty-two year old? How many of us pass judgment on that or think, hmm, hmm, true love there, baby? <laughs> right? We all have these these things in our environment that we see, that we look at, and we instantly pass judgment on it. Because more often than right, especially ladies, your intuition is a little bit more tuned in, probably because I don't want to say you're more less forgiving amongst your own kind. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Just saying. It's an observation. I'm probably totally wrong. All right. Here we go. So... <laughs> As an emotional, an over-emotional being in my entire life, go figure, um, I think, though, that everybody at some point and some time in their life has something that they've been emotionally held hostage by. 100%. I mean, just, there's too many parameters, and it's like infinite, really, of things that affect people in different ways. Yep. And I think to get out of it, they just need to be ready to be ready. And um, if they're not, they're going to roll around in the quagmire so, some more because that's just the life that, or not the life that they lead. Well, actually it is, but it's just the place that they're at in their life. And the fact that all of us <laughs> are here, we've made the commitment to be here we're stepping out of that day in and day out slowly but surely we're stepping out of it and that's um that's a pretty cool thing mr sean that you brought us all together into this group of misfits because um from where i'm standing watching us all grow it's pretty pretty cool and even myself i it's absolutely an amazing thing so there you go so as we go through this process whether it's all of us right now live on this call or somebody watching this a year from now, we have to, one of the first questions I ask any of my coaching students, mentoring students is, who's gonna be jealous of you when you leave this place? Right? There's, there's things some of us have already gone through in the last two months where people have went, what, something's different about you. And that's okay but we've stepped out and there's people, I, 
I know there's people who have, because of what I'm doing, I watch it, I track it, I love it, that have unfriended me, have, have dropped in different places and have gotten off my email list. <laughs> They're not ready to be ready. And so part of it is like, now I gotta tell you, as somebody who is a caregiver and somebody who absolutely loves people, there's a part of me for about eight seconds who goes, oh, oh I just want you to fix that. I'm like, sickety crap. Yeah, I gotta move on. I, I, yeah, I, I can't be tied to that. Now I gotta tell you, it does affect me. It does affect me and it's like, shit. How could you not want to be a part of this? I mean, that's me, my whole, right? And then it's like, okay. Sean, there's been even people that we've invited, I've invited on here too. And I'm thinking, how come they haven't shown up yet? Like I just, you know, right. I, just, but thank you. yeah, but you know what, when you were saying before about, you know, who, when I first heard that from you, who's going to be jealous of you when you're, when you, but whatever, succeed or whatever, whatever that looks like in their lives, like whatever that looks like for them. Like when you're, when you're growing and you're coming up, people recognize things for sure. And I, and I'm thinking too, like, you know, yeah, because how many times have we felt jealous of somebody else, their success, you know, how, and it's, and it's like, oh my gosh, I don't want to feel jealous about that. Cause I'm really happy for them, but how the hell are they doing it? You know what I mean? Like, it's just, so it really well, got out of bed in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it's like, it is so like, I mean, mind blowing free what we've been learning here. It's just, thank you for that. I'm not kidding you. And like I say, you can only bring people so far. If they want it, they'll take it. If they don't, they don't. That, that's them. Like, and I say, you can't fix stupid. Right. So it's like, and that's being harsh. I know that, but it's, it's true. Cool. So how do you, so I want you to think about this over the course of the next couple of days. Leslie said it, we've all been held hostage by something. Some of us maybe even in this moment are being held hostage and now we've had an awareness, right? Until you don't, until you know, you don't know. Because how many times have we sat and went, Wow, so, holy, ma oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And this, this awareness of an awareness of an awareness of an awareness. And you're like, why that's, when you realize the motive of somebody, right? People who are great manipulators. You know, you, I watch movies sometimes and I see how people are, true stories that have been turned, and the way they positioned and knew how p politics is a lot like that. They're gonna do this, they're gonna respond there, the big chess moves. Man, I could barely play checkers, let alone think seven moves ahead or 17 moves ahead or, or have 15 versions of 17 moves ahead. And it just became present again. So I was watching these videos on the Super Bowl where uh, Bill Belichick, they had him mic'd up and he said, hey, listen, where, whatever moment it was in the game, he says, he pulled his coaches over and he says, we've got about 15 more plays to run. Let's make sure we get them all right. I, I ne it never would have dawned on me how to set up the next 15 plays that you don't even know is gonna happen, what we should call and making sure we've got the right people in, the, in, in there at the right time in this side or the other. I just, it just, it blew me away. Just that one statement, we got about, there's about 15 plays left in the game. Let's get it together, make sure we got the right people in the right places and we make the right calls. It's football. How do you know if you get a fumble? But then they, but then they had an interception on the three yard line, and they go, "Okay, it, rules have changed. Let's set up the next 14 plays." It's like, wow. I really suck at futuring. I do. I guess I do. I, I know I do. I've always been very so responsive in my life. Maybe that's something right now. Maybe I'm having a confession. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. My last confession was three months ago, and right now I'm realizing that. Maybe I don't set the plans up. Maybe I'm, I've just been, because of my gift, I've been so reactive, I wait for people to call. Maybe now it's like, okay, screw that, I'm gonna go do it. Maybe you're witnessing something here. Well, I know you're witnessing something. <laughs> Maybe it's the start of something. What else? Anything else? These are tough topics. It's, it's tomorrow, 
I hope will, if unless the universe guides me differently, will be a little bit will be more about uh, uh, proactive in building uh, on success. Because to go from depression to re to recap to now emotional hostage, it's like, is this a suicide hotline? What is this thing? This call if somebody jumped on this. I think this call is pretty awesome. I, I think it is. In order to find out the to dos, you have to find out what hasn't worked and what's holding you back. So, I mean, you're going step by step. And if you would have been doing the other stuff first, I'd be lost again. Well, Margie, thank you for that. Because again, that was my that was my emotional hostage going. Geez, I want to make people feel. I want to make people feel good. But if we can't get to the root of feeling good, then there's no sense piling shit on top of ice cream. If you've got a broken bone and if they don't go in and repair it, you're going to limp forever. Oh, look, Rob's no longer driving in the twenty below weather. <laughs> Hi, guys. Really quick. Um... I mean, really, obviously, flood of memories and emotions and everything else come back when, you know, during this talk. Um, I have mentioned on other calls that, um, you know, I've, I've been laid off the last couple, you know, twice in the last two years, um, uh, you know, trying to take steps, looking for something, searching for something. Um, this group and this calls have been, you know, absolutely, you know, life changing. And I appreciate everyone that actually, you know, gives of them of, of themselves. Um, my one thought quicker, the challenge is, and I'm challenging myself. So that's why if I challenge you, then I can, maybe I, you know, I'm challenging myself, but, uh, I'm taking create, trying to take courageous action. And, you know, when I said, I'm trying to, you know, I'm praying for, you know, courage and conviction, but, you know, I, I took a trip to, you know, down South to, you know, check something out and it's, you know, it's just every day, just trying to change myself and, and get better. So, um. You know, thank you. It's it's amazing if we keep it simple, right? Courageous action. My 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 mission statement is courageous integrity, right? Living in those states, being courageous, stepping out, but being in integrity, never never challenging or or selling myself short. So totally get those words, Rob. Thank you for sharing that. Thanks. Morning, Sean. Good morning, Karen. Hi. Thanks, Rob, for saying what you did. That really helped me because I've been going through some really struggles lately. And I had a breakdown yesterday morning. My poor husband, he, <laughs> he says, oh, don't worry about going to church. I'll take you out for coffee. Calm down, calm down. Because I do a house cleaning part-time on top of my MLM. And that kind of crashed and left me financially strong so I've been out like on the weekend putting resumes in I haven't did that for years I'm going that was new that was different and I'm going I have not had a regular job in years and I have to find something part-time and that's kind of set like really put me in an emotional strain I woke up this morning I was having some dizzy spells um I know it's I know it's got to do with stress and emotion so um Plus, I didn't really sleep that well last night, too. So this has been on my mind. And I know I said to my um, presidential, I said, when I get through this, I'm going to have a story to t tell. Because <laughs> I know I'll get through it. If, <clears throat> like right now, I'm in a, an emotional, I don't know, depression, whatever, stress. So that's basically what I'm going through. And listening to what you were talking about, um, about being held hostage, Yes, I can see that, and I know I'll get through it. It's just like right now, I'm kind of in an emotional state right now, so I just wanted to share that. Well, Karen, thank you for being courageous enough to say that. See, one of the hardest things for anybody who's <clears throat> who is a hostage, who is an addict, to say, yeah, that's me, because of the fear of what other people may think about us or think of us or think through us. Oh, yeah, you are, I'm not, we all are. Leslie said it, we all are, we all are right now in some form or fashion. So Karen, I'd, I'd, I'd want to speak to your subconscious. And the reason I say that is because it activates the subconscious. It, it wakes up going, wait a minute, you just called me. Like somebody says your name in a crowd. <laughs> so when I say the subconscious, <clears throat> it's not speaking to the one that showed up. It's speaking to the one that's keeping you from showing up. It's okay. 
this change that Karen's going through, this change that she's being awakened to, is to reveal her greatness. Maybe it is for the story, but maybe it, there's somebody out there that when she goes to submit a resume, may find her and say, oh my God, you're the person I've been looking for. It could be that when she goes and does whatever it is for that income, it could be a place for the company to say, we've got the right person in the right place. So this isn't to change who you are, it's to reveal more of your greatness. To go do what you haven't done in a long time, maybe it's because you need to be the example of somebody who can't do what you're doing right now. So maybe in this challenge, you're becoming the greatest example for somebody who would always have been stuck, who would never have the courage to do what you're doing. Maybe this is the most courageous thing you've ever done. And yet sometimes our hostageness says, oh yeah, but you, you said you were gonna make this MLM thing go crazy. This is, this is only day by day, we're all addicts, right? The 12 step program says day by day. Somebody on here 19 years, can give us that, I don't see him right now, but sober for 19 years, right? Chat a lot, day by day. How do you do it? Day by day. So know that our support is with you. I'm gonna speak for everybody. Our support is with you. And the fact that you showed up here showed me that the part of you, the part of the subconscious that's, that's wanting to show up here is sometimes not the mind, is, is the mind programming that keeps us from it. So. Love you tons. Thanks for having the courage. You're an amazing superstar. The world needs you and you are making a difference. You just made a difference to all of these people here today. Because what Rob said to you, that you said thank you to him, changed his world, but it also, you changed his world and said, oh my God, I wasn't even gonna come back on after I got out of the car. It could have been a thousand and one things, but the fact that he came on and said that one thing, you changed his life, Karen, because you said thank you. I wasn't going to say anything this morning. I said I was just going to listen because like, I was kind of like in an emotional state. So it's just like, yeah. So. Hey, thanks. This is what this community does, folks. This is what you are doing. The Zoom is there. You guys are chatting like chatty Cathy's before I get on. That's why I'm like, okay, now I'm going to jump on like at 29. So I can just, this is so cool. Uh, Sean, I had uh, an opportunity to make a little post this morning on on a site on Facebook to sh share an idea that I had that came up over the weekend uh, when we were uh, contemplating uh, uh, the Tao of things, sitting mm -hmm. on our butts and <laughs> thinking about that. And it occurred to me that that's that's all great. We need to do that but we also need to be in action. And I started to think about, okay, what, you know, when we're, when we're, when we have a goal, an objective, and we're trying to start, uh, uh, make some progress in that direction, and we run into some inconveniences, some um, obstacles, uh, what might be a simple way to think about it? And the way I thought about it was that there's sort of three major beliefs. Number one, you have to believe that what you're going to attempt to do can be done, that you can do it because number one, somebody else has already done it. Uh, number two, you have to have the belief that 80% uh, of, of the task or, or more is showing up actually starting to do it and uh, be, because uh, you won't accomplish anything just by thinking up thinking up your goal <laughs> and then it occurred to me to think well most people quit at the 11th hour they work for a long period of time and then all of a sudden they quit well uh, what if you think about it as in terms of if you can convince yourself that until, until you get past 1059, you're just doing it. And like uh, Gilda Radner used to say on Saturday Night Live, it's always something. Well, no, Roseanne, Rosanna Dana, it's only 1059. You're, you're just, you're just uh, on the path. 
Yep. You just keep going. So anyway, that was thought I had. And again, I think that's so powerful because we never know when the breakthrough is, right? We all know the story, Three Feet from Gold, um, Acres of Diamonds, all of these stories where in real life, they were, they were inches away from what could have been life-changing. It was life-changing for somebody. So all of these ideas, when we see somebody successful, look, Linda was talking about, we see people successful, like how do these people get tie their shoes and get out of bed? Thank God for Velcro. Otherwise they wouldn't know what to do, right? I mean, we can come up with all the justifications, but they got to 11 o'clock and we were at 10.59. Totally get that. Thanks, Charlie, on that one. So thank you for everyone that, that contributed. Thank you for everyone that was here because your energy is still flowing in and through and to us. Um, let's see what the universe gives me guidance on for tomorrow. Because I got to tell you, I, I gave up trying to figure out what I... I I think about it, I write it down, but in meditation, these words show up and it's like, where am I going with this? How do I even have the authority to do this? This is, I'm speaking, I'm just letting you know, for somebody who's pretty good at what they do and stands on stage and people ask me to talk about a lot of stuff, I still let the universe guide me on a moment by moment basis. And here we are in this, in this conversation that we just had, that I thought I had no idea where it would go. But again, it makes an impact to the ones who are here at the right moment. It'll make an impact to those that watch the recording. So thank you all for allowing me to do what I love to do. I get what I love to do. So I wish you all the best. Have, a, have an amazingly hostage-free day. Recognize it, write it down. Thank each other for being here, right? You, there's communications going on inside of the little Kathy Chatties that are here, all of us. I'm a Kathy Chatty. So I love you all. I appreciate you all. And I'll see you all where? At the next event. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Love you tons. Bye for now.